Should the Christians just be quiet? I had somebody on social media the other day say, Jeff, you just need to keep your views to yourself. We don't want to hear your Christian views in our world today. And I'm thinking, really? I mean, this is social media, you know, and we are able to share our views across the board. I mean, like, are you thinking like uh, everybody can share their views except for Christians? Is that the way it is? Well, that's certainly been the motive of the devil. Satan has always tried to silence God's voice and God's people who are speaking about what God would have us to say. And so Jesus tells us that we are to never fear another man. You know what the Bible teaches? It teaches that we're supposed to be out speaking. We're supposed to be out counterculture, speaking to people about what God really says and what God is really doing. We're to do it in love and kindness, the best that we possibly can. And we're to share the gospel of Jesus Christ in such a way that people can see the light of Jesus Christ. You understand that Satan has got a, a veil over the eyes of the lost people, that they are darkened. The gospel is hidden to the lost people because Satan is keeping them in darkness. And Jesus calls us to shine a light in the face of Jesus Christ. And yet some of you out there that are Christians, you're scared to do it because you're scared of what they might say or what it might cost you. You might might lose uh, some uh, reputation somehow or, or job or on social media. You might you lose views or whatever. Don't you worry about that. You know what Jesus said? He says, don't you fear any man who can kill the body. Don't do it. You fear the one who can kill the body and the soul in hell. You know what he's saying? You don't fear men. Don't be, don't be afraid of what they can do to the body. He says you fear God who not only can he kill the body, but he can kill the soul as well. This is Jesus' words. That's what he says. Another place in the Bible he tells us, he says, take up a cross and follow me. You want to follow me? Take up your cross and follow me, Jesus said. He said, do it every day. And that's the way Christians are supposed to live. So no, we're not supposed to be silent. We're supposed to be very vocal. We look at the disciples who were facing death every single time they stood up to preach. And they stood there with a backbone of a saw log. And they preached the word of God like, man, they knew they were going to get crucified the very next minute. But yet somehow God took care of them through it. Many of them did die. In fact, all the apostles uh, of Jesus Christ, all of his disciples were put to death, except for John, and he, he just as well had been. He was boiled in hot oil and then cast out to the Isle of Patmos to die. And so they stood, they believed, they followed. The whole world was saying, shut up, we don't want to hear you. But they didn't shut up, and because of it, we Christians have the gospel today, and we are now sitting in the luxury of being able to sit in our privacy and read our Bibles. We're able to go in church in public and worship the Lord, and we're able to speak in the public square. In America, we have what's called uh, free speech, and we can speak. Now, some people say, yeah, Jeff, you think we do, but we don't. You know, you got a point there. Now, we ain't got near the free speech we'd like to have, but what we do have, we show enough better to use it while we can. The Bible says when Jesus was talking one time on the Sermon on the Mount, he said, he said, you're the salt of the earth. And if the salt has lost its effectiveness with, uh, what is it good for but to be cast out and be trotted under the foot of men? Meaning that we are the, we're the game changers. We're the salt that makes a difference. You put a little salt in a pot of stew, and that, soup, that salt, that uh, stew is a whole lot better. Or you put a little salt on a sidewalk that's frozen, it'll thaw that out. You put a little salt in a wound, it'll help heal it up. But salt is that which makes a difference. And whenever salt is not able to make a difference, it's cast out to be trotted under the foot of men. What does that mean in our world today? It means this. The Christians are the salt of the earth, and many of them are literally sterile because they're scared to speak up about Jesus Christ in the public forum. They keep everything private to themselves, and when they're with a bunch of other Christians, man, they can talk Christian big time, but whenever they're out in the world, they can't talk about Jesus Christ. That means your salt is sterile, and that's the reason the church right now is somewhat cast out and being trotted under the foot of men. In what way, Jeff? I'll tell you one way. When you look at these churches, so-called churches, and I'm talking about really so-called churches, out there saying that they are Christian churches, but they are promoting all kinds of perverse ideologies in the pulpit, those are Satan's churches. They are demonically uh, possessed just because they can have a church building with stained glass windows and they can have a stage and they can have someone up there speaking and say that's a preacher. That don't mean it's a church. A church is a body of the called out ones. 
God's people who are called out. Called out from where? Called out from the world, and they are separate. They are sanctified. They are God's special people called out to serve Jesus Christ. Not some social organization, some perverted group that comes into the church, takes over the church, and all those who built that church years before are cast out and trotted under the foot of men. No, sir, Christians, we don't need to be quiet. We need to be up front, out loud, and sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Sharing it in love, absolutely, but sharing it anyway. And letting the world know that Jesus Christ is Lord. And at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. And so what we're supposed to be doing now is being effectively sharing the gospel in such a way that it's changing our culture. We are the salt of the earth. We're here to make a difference. He also said, Jesus said, in that same sermon... He says, you're the light of the world. And so what is a light used for? Is it something that you hide behind a bushel? He says, no, you put it on a lampstand and let it shine as far as you can let it shine. Let your light shine before men. And that's exactly what Christian people ought to do. And when all of Satan's demons are screaming at us saying, you shut up and you sit down and you be quiet, you leave us alone, we don't want to hear from you, you just smile and tell them about the love of Jesus Christ. They are in the darkness. We need to shine a light on the, on the Lord Jesus Christ that they may see the truth. You know the truth is? You give your life to Jesus Christ, he, he saves you. You are born again. You see a whole new world. I remember when I got saved, it was like somebody reached inside my head and my soul and turned the light switch on. And suddenly I can see life clearly that what there is a God who loves me, who forgives me, who, who changes my life. And he, and he started doing that a long time ago. And he has proved his, he's proved his ability to change me by literally on the inside changed my soul. And that's what a lost world needs to see today. No matter how deep they are in sin, God loves them, but God hates their sin. And God desires to save them, but God ain't willing to condone their sin. God ain't willing for them to come along and say, yeah, God, I'm going to follow you. Yes, Jesus, you're my Lord, but I want to tell you about this thing they're calling sin. It ain't sin. If God says it's sin, it's sin. And, and you can't change it. And the only way to confess your sin is you say the same thing about your sin that, that God says about your sin. You don't ever try to justify it. Instead, you turn to God and say, no, God, I'm wrong. You're right. Help me to repent and to be what you want me to be. And so one of the areas Christians need to repent in right now is that area of being silent in the marketplace. We're being quiet and we don't let people know who God really is and what he really means to us.